Memories are always implanted in the human mind uh, in a very almost permanent way. Uh, the memories that we hold as human beings, as sentient life, they tend to translate from a number of uh, stimuli, a number of uh, sensual stimuli. Uh, our sight, touch, hearing, uh, taste, and smell, these all translate to a certain amount of data that is combined and produce memory. But the memory uh, is often lost uh, a lot of the time for most of us as humans. Um, the memories uh, are kind of tossed into the wind of thought. Uh, so much so that most, the vast majority of our memories are lost because we don't know how to hang on to them. But the key to hanging on to memories, the key to hanging on to uh, these experiences is remembering specific sensual data. Uh, if you remember the specific feeling that you got when you smelled something, then it's more likely that memory will be basically tied to you. Uh, if you remember the, the edge of something that you saw, not just the, the image itself, but the edge of it, the, the feeling that it inspired by observing just the edge of something, the edge of a piece of glass, the, um, uh, the outline of a, uh, of a building, uh, the very outline, and you register that in relation to the emotion that it made you feel, the, the feeling that it inspired, then it's more likely that you will retain a memory. Memories are vast because as human beings, we have so many of them. When we experience things, it is, it is obviously transferred into a memory. It's, it is uh, apparently transferred into something that is described through multiple senses, because we have multiple senses, of course. And when this happens, we have to lock on to at least one of the senses that a memory employs in order for it to last. Uh, whether it be sound, whether it be scent, whether it be uh, touch, sight, uh, and it's never it's never the broad spectrum of one of these senses that helps us retain a memory. It's always the uh, it's always the little details. Um, if you smell something, it isn't necessarily the smell of something that helps you remember it. It's the it's the part of the smell that helps you remember it. If you smell a flower, um, you might. You might remember it through uh, the after smell of it. You, you might remember uh, this, the flower through how it, uh, how it left the smell behind and not necessarily the smell itself. Or if you saw something, if you saw uh, somebody doing a, an amazing uh, bicycle move, for instance. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I chose bi bicycle move, but uh, if you saw somebody doing that, uh, you might not remember it broadly or vaguely, but you might remember the uh, the color of the tire as it hit the sun when it met the concrete. It's always the tiniest specific things that help us hang on to memories. And uh, I'll give one more example. Um, another example might be not the taste of a, a chicken salad, but the uh, the flavor that it left behind after you wash your mouth out <laughs> and it, these are these are all very specific but it's those little details that help you hang on help you to grapple and uh get a hook into a memory and bring it back to yourself uh long after you've forgotten most of it and uh that's all i got to say about memories for right now but uh i hope that you get a general idea of how we hang on to memories and the experiences uh, that are composed of memories because experiences do not do not exist alone they always exist through the senses uh, they always exist through the memories that are assigned to individual senses that we can gra we can grasp onto through um, specific details in each sense but uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up down there. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please subscribe. And uh, I'm always taking uh, suggestions. So uh, feel free to shoot me any of those. Thank you.